In this video, we're going to discuss the real impact of early retirement on Social Security. Coming up next on Holy Schmidt. Holy Schmidt! For the primary insured, basically the person watching this video, if you're wondering what happens to your Social Security payment if you leave the workforce early, there are three things that affect the size of your payment. One is the number of years that you worked, the second is the amount that you earned during that period of time, and the third is when you actually take Social Security. Let's start off with how long you worked. The Social Security Administration will take your best 35 years of earnings and index those to today's dollars using something called an average wage index. This is done through age 59, age 60 and above they use the actual amount that you earned, it is not indexed. Let's say you're a practitioner of the Financially Independent Retire Early Movement, or FIRE, and you decide at age 37 that after 15 years of work, you are done working. That's it. You're out of the workforce. This means that you will have 15 years of work history, not 35, and the Social Security Administration will give you zeros for the rest of those years. So your payment, because you only had 15 out of 35 years, even when indexed into the future, Will be quite small. If you look at the literature on the FIRE movement, by the way, you need to commit to some pretty extreme money-saving behavior to get out in your 30s or even your 40s in most cases. Truth be told, if I knew then what I know now, I'd be getting hard to be part of the FIRE movement because who wouldn't want to stop working after a decade, decade and a half of working? But there's just one problem with the FIRE movement. I've only met two people who've successfully executed the FIRE movement well and retired in their 30s and lived the standard of living that most people would be happy with. And both of them, by the way, were entrepreneurs and they sold their own businesses. It doesn't usually happen that way, by the way. And the truth is, after a certain period of time, they did re-enter the workforce, not because they had to, but because they were bored. What I hear or read about anecdotally, though, is that people are doing some pretty extreme things. They're renting a room in a basement to save money. They're doing chores around the house to reduce their rent further. They're buying a good pair of walking shoes so that they don't have to own a car. Subscribing to streaming services that have commercials so that they don't have to pay for the streaming service. In essence, they're taking the time that they used to devote to work and using that time to fulfill their FIRE lifestyle. Which brings me to the group that you probably fall into, financially independent, retire, normal or FERN. No, not FERN, FERN. This group tends to be in their mid-50s to early 60s, so they've either hit their 35 years or they're pretty close to it. So their metric tends to not be about hitting the minimum number of years. They've gotten to 35 years or pretty close. Their metric is really about maximizing their average indexed monthly earnings. And people tend to earn more later in their career than earlier in their career, all things being equal but earning more, even significantly more, isn't as impactful as you think. The reason is that the Social Security Administration isn't going to just give you your average monthly earnings over the last 35 years as a payment. They're going to haircut it using something called Ben points. In 2024, for example, and assuming you took your Social Security payment at full retirement age, the SSA is going to give you 90% of your first $1,174 in average index monthly earnings, 32% of the amount between 1174 and 7078, and 15% for any amount above that up to the earnings limit. So if your average indexed earnings was say $5,000 a month over the last 35 years, and by working a few more years, you could increase that to 5250 per month, your payment would go from 2281 to 2361, or about $80 more using 2024 Ben points. How hard is it to increase your average index monthly earnings by $250 a month? Well, it depends on your earnings history. If you had very low earnings in the beginning of your career, and those were for a significant period of time, and you have much higher earnings now, you can do it relatively quickly. However, if you were earning there or thereabouts about the same amount of money, and now you're making a little bit more, it's going to take a long time. The biggest one that impacts your social security payment is how long you wait after you become eligible to collect social security. People become eligible at 62 
and they can get their maximum payment if it's their own primary insurance amount that we're talking about. They get the maximum payment at age 70. The payment to you increases between 6 and 8% per year that you wait on average between age 62 and age 70, depending on when you take it. The number gets a little higher the closer you get to age 70. Now, logically, most people at this point in time think, this is totally in my control. I may not be able to increase my average indexed monthly earnings because my pay hasn't increased dramatically, and so therefore I have a limited upside potential by waiting, but I can wait to take Social Security and thereby increase my payment by 6 to 8% per year that I wait. For most retirees, by the way, waiting will have the single biggest impact on the size of your Social Security payment. But there is a problem. For most of you, you have a defined contribution plan, or a 401k, and in order to live in early retirement, you need to have funds coming in from somewhere. That typically is your retirement account. If your 401k is going down too fast, or if you have a pension even, and retiring early will give you one payment, but waiting later will give you a larger payment, most people weigh that against the Social Security payment and when to take Social Security. People get very focused when their 401k is dropping quickly on how to stop that from happening. So the biggest risk to your Social Security payment if you retire early is that you're going to take it early and not maximize your Social Security payment. Finally, and this is anecdotal, a little bit off the subject on Social Security, but if you retire early, you stop contributing to your 401k and you start drawing on your 401k. For every year that you wait, you're contributing more, not drawing down a year's worth of financial need. If you haven't subscribed already, please consider clicking subscribe and turn on notifications so that you get alerted the next time I post a video, I post about once or twice a week. This is Jeff Schmidt. Thanks for watching.